Resolver and then the order of installation, the installation, the order in which your gem should be installed. These are the four primarily, uh, uh, four main problems that bundler tackles actually, or bundler uses, touches. So, how many of you are, you are familiar with the Ruby Gems API or have used in one way or another? Nice. Alright, so there's like there are two parts of uh, Ruby Gems API. One part is like the JSON based API where you can Give the name of the gem and then it returns you JSON response that has like the uh, the gem name and the version and then the gems that this gem depends on and so that's one part and uh, there's a there's a one using one you can also download the uh, download the gem spec of a gem using Ruby Gems API and there's a API called Ruby Gems dependency API which is like you can give a a list of a string list of gems that you know like uh, you can just pass it on and then you get, you get a marshal data and it includes like uh, all the dependency of the list that you have given actually I'll show you in a minute like how this works so you can like there's a let's say you have rails and then you have uh, you have react whatever the client side and then you can give a comma separated list and then it will give you the full dependencies that these gems depend on. So that is called, that is the Ruby gems dependency API that Bundler uses to figure out the gem situation. And then there is a dependency resolver. Okay, so uh, using this uh, Ruby gems spec 4.1.0 ZZ, you can actually download the, all the all Ruby gems, uh, and, and not, not the, the gem themselves, but you can download all the gems that Ruby Gems is hosting actually. You can download their name and you can download their versions. So that is your specs 4.1.zz file that Bundler uses and you can use it as well if you are interested in how uh, how many gems are there or if you want to do any sort of data mining on Ruby Gems. Then you have Ruby Gems or API v1. So that is another endpoint and there is another endpoint for downloading the gem spec actually. You can be v1 slash you can say rails dot uh, gem spec dot and it will give you the the, the marshal version of uh, Rails, all the all the you know, all the you know, all the versions of Rails Genspec actually. So it will include uh, like the, what dependencies have you? You, you have written Genspec, right? It's a it's a plain Ruby object actually. So it will give you that. Now the depend the dependency API is not maintained by Ruby Jumps team. It is maintained by Bundler team, and uh, it works like this. You can give uh, Ruby gems at all v1 dependencies gems equal to rails this and what it gives you is is basically an array a, a Ruby array but it marshals and gzips it before uh, returning it and it includes like all the versions of rails in an array and it includes each version of rails and all its dependencies so you can assume it's quite a big data actually so but it doesn't include uh, Bunch of other stuff that is included in Genspec, for example, author name, website, description, blah blah blah. So it's a uh, it's a it's a shortcut kind of. So it was uh, it was created, it is not full Genspec, and the reason this bundler API was designed was because downloading complete Genspec of each gem that you have in your gem file was too costly, and, and we don't need homepage and uh, author name blah 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 to to do the dependency resolution actually. So this is the the Bundler API that sits there. Uh, we have like uh, we have quite a bit of problems there with Bundler API. Like if you have uh, it was running on Heroku and we were like getting getting tossed actually because of amount of uh, requests that it receives. So yeah, we recently migrated from like yeah we recently changed it from Unicorn to uh, to uh, Puma actually and, and the performance has been pretty good. So this is the dependency API that Bundler uses. So I have short time here. So, like, yeah. so it's just Marshall array. And there's another interesting fact. 
So, bundle resolves dependency using two ways. One is the we call full source index. So when you have a gem file and uh, you have Rails, you have MySQL two, blah blah blah. Then when you bundle can download complete gem spec of each gem that is there in your gem file, right? Like you have Rails and then you have everything. You can download and can form, uh, it can create a dependency graph, or it can use that bundle API. It just downloads the tuples actually, the trails, and it has this dependency, it has to, which, is, which, is, which is very quick actually. It doesn't have to download that much data. So there are two ways one can do dependency resolution. One is the, the typical Ruby Gems API, and another is this dependency API. Now, if you somehow, it's an interesting fact that I put in slide, if you have, if your gem file has directly greater than 100 gems in your gem file, then it will trigger the complete full source index download, which will mean that spec.4.8.gz, which is like 32,000 gems, <laughs> that list will be downloaded and, and all the gems that match from your gem file, like there's a Rails, and Rails is the gem name, and for each version, it will download the complete files actually for that one. So that is something, uh, th that's the reason Bundlet and RubyGems team are working on a new index actually to help that, uh, to help speed it up. So. <coughs> That is the, that's how the, the API sort of bundle works. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the interruption. So you say that whenever you have more than a hundred gems in your gem file, that is it's going to download the full index. Yeah, it's going to download. It, it's going to download the full index. By that, I don't mean every gem, thirty-two thousand gems. I mean the gems. It will download the complete because bundle doesn't know which versions will match. Correct. You have you, you might have specified greater than 3.0.0 Rails version, right? So it doesn't know which versions will match and, and and what version will depend on each other. So it will just search for the name. So it will it will first download the full spec stuff, which will include all the versions, and then based on the name, it will download the all the versions gem spec of all the gems that match actually. All right. So the area where I uh, I'm interested and in, I have been working for last couple of uh, one month is the dependency resolver which is uh, like an NP complete problem actually and current algorithm is like written by Yehuda uh, Yehuda it's like recursive and uh, it doesn't really cover uh, cover a lot of modern cases actually so you might see like where you will find that uh, your gem file was legitimate and Bundler simply couldn't resolve it actually so you, you will find a lot of problems there and uh, how does dependency resolver works is like after it creates that index of each like after downloading the that two, two pull actually it creates a dependency graph actually and then it kind of backtracks it's a backtracking algorithm it kind of uh, figures out like which gems are activated and which gems are good to install actually it's a lightning talk so i don't have a whole lot of time to explain here but uh, in a nutshell like that's how the uh, dependency resolver works and it, it is not perfect. We have loads of uh, bugs open in Bundler uh, for this. Now, thankfully, this dependency resolution is not a new problem. There, there is a APT and there is a YUM and there is like loads of package uh, managers. They have already have the similar problem of you know like dependency resolution. So uh, it, it it falls into a, a problem called Boolean satisfiability problem, and there are like. Uh, uh, known libraries, for example, there's a library called Minisat actually, which is specifically written for uh, solving uh, this class of problems. And there is a, and uh, that the, the problem is the bundle cannot depend on any other gem actually or any other library. So that kind of compounds that I cannot just use Minisat like which is a C library. It's quite fast. I cannot just use uh, Minisat and you know like make the dependency resolution uh, work faster and and, and more accurate. Never be hundred percent correct, but more accurate. So the that, that's one. And the the problem with Boolean, Boolean satisfiability is like is it just like given a set of uh, five gems, which gems should be installed? We tell you which these three gems should be installed. It doesn't optimize for which highest version to install. Generally, when you have give uh, Rails greater than three point zero point zero, then you probably want like Rails four point zero to be installed. So there's another class of call problems called pseudo Boolean problem. So that's like a kind of a subset of a Boolean satisfiability problem, and there are libraries for that as well. There's been a paper written on this topic as well by 
graph is made and the ruby gem uh, or bundler figures out what gems to install the next next difficult problem that bundler has is to figure out in what order gems should be installed for example you have you have like uh, uh, you have rails which depends on active support and active support depends on something else so the gems has to be installed like active support has to be installed first before rails could be installed so the second problem is uh, the, the next problem is like yeah the, the order of gems which is like Ruby already have uh, this library called Ruby. It's, it's a part of a standard library, topological sort. So it's like T sort. And after the, the dependency graph is built, and we specify the uh, the order, and we uh, we feed the graph into uh, T sort uh, library, and then it gives you the order in which the gem should be installed. <coughs> so it's it's a very standard stuff there, and. Uh, yeah, some other problems are there is like Bundler must have must not have a dependency. Bundler should run on all rubies, including uh, 1.8.6, and in fact, in some cases, as well as that actually. So, those are some of the uh, restrictions that Bundler works with. Mm, talk is more or less done here. Some other facts that I want to like uh, in uh, next release that which will be Bundler 1.4, which will be uh, which will get released soon. So it will have support for like parallel installation of gems. So you can say like you know like hyphen j10. So you have like 10 threads or processes downloading gems and, and parallelly and install it. That is one of the coolest thing in the, the new version new version coming up. Then you have like uh, cyclic dependencies. <coughs> like if, if a gem A depends on gem B and gem B depends on gem A, people do run into such situations actually. So you will have like uh, uh, such cyclic dependencies to the resolution much better detected and you know reported at the user rather than throwing some weird error actually. And uh, yeah, so also lightning talk, so that's it. I'm done. And uh, I hope I can. Uh, I know go ahead and do fire on uh, Twitter, GitHub, IRC, wherever. I, uh, any questions? Sorry? Yeah, it Bundler works on Windows, Linux, anything. So it's like it's a pure Ruby library, so it has to work in whatever environment Ruby is. So it, it works with Mac Ruby and like uh, Ruby Motion, things like that as well. So. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Nice. All right, so we have one more talk left.